about this. The latest job figures show how Austin's economy is doing better than many cities across the country. Good news. In December, the unemployment rate dropped from 6.6% to 6.3. That's better than Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. So that result is getting a lot of attention, and Austin is getting noticed because of that. So MSNBC's The Dylan Radigan Show is here in Austin to check out some of the city's top strategies for growth. It's all part of his 30 million jobs tour and he's joining us now to talk about his uh, new book too which I will put up so everybody could see. Dylan, thank you for being here. Oh, it's a, what an exciting thing to, to be able to spend some time in this town. In the great I, city I, of Austin. Oh, it's unbelievable. So, I, you know, it's really wonderful. So you've been talking about South by Southwest and other uh, events that really put Austin on the map. Yeah. Uh, well, the premise of the 30 million jobs tour at its heart mm -hmm. is, I mean, listen, look at the size of that number. It's immense. You know, there's, no, there's no government plan, no private sector plan. There's no linear solution to create 30 million jobs. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't acknowledge what the size of the problem in this country is, which is we need 30 million jobs. Right. And so our whole point in sort of traveling around the country all throughout this entire year is to highlight that it is systems, environments that will ultimately grow jobs like this regionally by capturing the tribal culture, if you will, the local identities of these various parts of this country, Miami, Austin, uh, Omaha, Chicago, and they're all completely, I mean, they couldn't be more different, you know? And, and, the, and the thing that's so exciting, I think, and that is so instructive for everybody else, and the reason we're so excited to bring the show here and show people sort of more about what Austin is, is Austin is a classic example of a place that realized that the strength of the community mm -hmm. and the strength of the community's decision to engage with one another to create a creative output, to create a cultural output, to create a culture of how, not a culture of what, but a culture of how we are going to relate to each other in a way that is supportive of one another and our mutual development is the single most powerful economic model in America today. And the statistics you laid out for the city relative to the rest of Texas uh, bear that out. Exactly. And so how do we compare to the other cities that you've been touring? Uh, you know, Austin is a beacon of light. Uh, Austin represents, there's a sort of myth in America that, well, the only places that are able to really become these cultural centers and creative centers and job centers tend to revolve around Silicon Valley and Northern California, or tend to revolve around Boston and the sort of the, the, the sort of elite academic uh, pool of activity. Mm -hmm. All those things are wonderful. What Austin is proving every day is that the decision to form in your own community, in the identity of wherever you are. In this case, we are in the magnificent part of this country that is Central Texas. I mean, look around at the 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 not only the ruggedness and the history of the toughness and the, and the intensity of this state's history, how that has come together in a way that is now sort of this incredible uh, experiment, basically, that is going incredibly well, which is all of this interaction. You don't want to say the title of my book, do you? <laughs> I was going to tell I was, you. Yeah, yeah, so I saw I, how no, you did I it. I might get in trouble like, saying it, but... The book I mean, is called Greedy Bastards, it's okay? That is the name you know. of the book. We don't want to get you fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my goal. I, I did get Barbara Walters said it on the View. You I mean, did? You know, Barbara, she said, Dylan, your book is Greedy Bastards. And I said, that is <laughs> what my in book that is. Voice. And she so said it, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 um, but anyway, the point of the book is is really to identify the reason that obviously the, the title is very provocative and all the rest sure. of it, but is to capture that visceral energy that we're all feeling, which is that there's two sets of rules in America: one for these characters and one for everybody else. What my real point, though, is this. You will never find a room full of greedy, you're never going to find them. They don't exist. Mm. Greedy bastardism is a behavior. It's a way of making decisions that we all get to choose every day. And the antidote to it is changing the way we make decisions with each other and embracing the solutions that are being modeled by places like Austin and other parts of America that create value for the community as opposed to one tiny piece of any community basically exploiting everybody else for their own self-preservation. And that sort of is the, the, the the inspiration for me is that I can see that it's happening. You mm. can see these little oases all over America yeah. where people are actually driving their own antidote to greedy bastardism without even thinking, without using those words or in thinking in that way, but there's a, a, a commitment to solving these problems in our communities that I believe will be the road forward. I don't think that the political debate with the Republicans and the Democrats, I don't care who you want, whatever, it's not, not, they're not here to solve our problems. They're here to take money to grant favors for the people they like. Right. So the Democrats take money from one group of people and they give them their favors. The Republicans take money from a different group of people, they give them their favors. Mm -hmm. Our whole point is no more two sets of rules. We 
know what's going on and, gotcha. and time's up. Gotcha. <laughs> you are fascinating to speak with and you're going to be over at Book People on Friday from 1230 to 145 talking about your book. Are you going to be signing some books too? We're gonna, we'll, sign, we'll sign them, we'll talk about them and I'm sure that I will learn a tremendous, I've, I've yet to go out into a community like this and not learn vastly more than I ever expected. So I, I have come to just truly, I mean, my, the title of my speech is My Name is Dylan Radigan and I Don't Know. <laughs> well, my only problem, oh. Dylan, is that you're putting us on the map on a national scale, so now everybody's going to move to Austin. Well, listen, it'll be good for your real estate prices. <laughs> as long as you'll just buy your house now because the people are coming. You got it. <laughs> Dylan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You can me. always watch your show on MSNBC as well.